Ooh, it's a tip bit nipply outside. Luckily, I only had to unfreeze one padlock to get here, but the door wasn't frozen, so that's good. Let's get these fluorescents fired up. Hell yeah. Today, one of these things is not like the other. Transmitter edition. Or is it transducer? Someone tell me in the comments the difference, because that shit confuses me. Let's go ahead and knock the dust off this poor girl. It's got a special place in my heart, because I actually built this cabinet a few years ago, but it's starting to look like the Temple of Doom in here, so let's do a super thorough cleanup. Alright, it's starting to look good as new. Let's open this thing up, see what's going on. That PT fail light is programmed to come on if the levels stray more than 4 inches, so obviously that's why that's lit up, but let's turn this light on, hell yeah. Hell no! And now it's time for all the cabinet designers and everyday cabinet builders out there to trash me, and I'll probably deserve it. Surprised those stickies are still on there, I still don't have a stud welder. My day-to-day -day is usually troubleshooting, but every now and then a situation's so bad that we just have to start over. Probably only happens a few times a year, but I do enjoy building these cabinets. And one thing I've learned is always use fuse holders with indicator lights. It'll make your life a little bit easier. Let's take a look at this here little electron pill. It is the one for the secondary level, so that kind of makes sense. And as soon as I pull it, the signal splitter gets mad, and so do the analog cards on the PLCs. He's mad. He's mad. He's madder than Mad Jack McMad. Now they didn't freak out until I completely disconnected the fuse holder, and that's because the little light in the fuse holder has just enough resistance to keep the milliamp loop within range. But as you can see, once it's pulled, we go completely out of range and into the negatives. Let's get this little guy out of here and see what's going on. These things are super hard to see. It looks like there's still a filament, but that doesn't mean it's good. Guess we'll break out the thousand dollar meter to test this, even though we could do it with a Fisher Price one, I mean Klein one. I'm just kidding, your Klein meter's fine. The only reason I have this one is because I didn't pay for it. As is tradition, as soon as I touch the leads together, a pump starts up and scares the crap out of me. And as you saw, the fuse is bad, so let's see what's going on. The transmitter comes into this little surge suppressor, so let's test there. And no, we're not going to just pop another fuse in this time. And there's your reason why. That's not nearly enough resistance. More! More! Let's go ahead and test the other transmitter just to see what an acceptable reading is. It's always convenient when there's two identical ones right next to each other. And plus, now we're missing both levels, so we can really piss people off. Alright, let's go outside and see what's going on. On my way, I found this cool turd sickle. I had to kick it, although it wouldn't have been as fun if it broke my toes. Speaking of turret sickles, this box with the transmitters come in has seen better days. I'm pretty sure the warm air from the wet well is getting into it and condensing, and then it got cold and everything froze, so I'm gonna have to seal up that pipe at some point. But it did make this cool little skating rink inside. Luckily, it doesn't look like the terminals got too soaked. So the left side is where the cables come in from the PLC cabinet, and the right side goes down to the wet well. We'll go ahead and disconnect the right side because that's the actual end of the transmitter cable. This will let us narrow everything down and make sure it's not an issue with the wiring from here to the PLC cabinet. If anyone was wondering what those little accordion looking things are, they're called bellows and they hook to the vent tubes of the transmitters to keep water from getting in them. Those vent tubes are there so the transmitters can adjust based on atmospheric pressure. Looks like our transmitter's shorted out, so I guess we're going to have to replace it. Let's open the poop hole. The bit of despair. So generally we hang our transmitters on chains, that way we can adjust them up and down in about one inch increments. And we don't use guide tubes or stilling wells because we've actually had better luck with them just free floating. But we do attach them to stainless steel cables so the weight isn't on the electrical cable. And we also try to mount them right by the hatch so that you don't have to get in the wet well to get them out. So as long as they don't get sucked up by a vector, it's been a pretty good system. Believe it or not, this one actually looks pretty good. It doesn't even have any rags on it. It's kind of a miracle. You could damn near eat off it. And I have the unfortunate privilege of knowing a few old timers who probably would just to gross you out. All right, this one isn't rebuildable, so let's break out a new one. Wow, so shiny. They call this a birdcage style transmitter because of the little cage on the bottom. All it does is measure pressure. That's what that little diaphragm is for that's ribbed for your pleasure. That's the actual sensor. This is a 15 PSI transmitter, and at 27.7 inches of water per PSI, that gives us about 415 inches of range, which is plenty for most of what we do. Alright, got the new one attached, but before we put it back in the well, I want to go ahead and replace the fuse and turn it on, see what it reads. It should be about zero, because when it's out of the water, it's at atmospheric pressure. 
zero PSI, four milliamps, zero inches. Looks like our signal splitter is happy again. Pretty lame computer two, pretty lame computer one. Now let's check the display and see if everything's happy. And negative two, not perfect, but uh, at least it didn't short out this time. Let's get her back in the water. Here's one advantage of using a stainless steel cable attached to the transmitter. Because the stainless steel cable never changes length, even if you replace the transmitter, it still ends up in the same spot in the well. But we can adjust it if we need to. But as everyone who messes with these things knows, your zero, or the spot where it hangs in the well, is the most important thing. If that's off, all your readings will be wrong. Alright, let's go ahead and close up the turd dungeon and see how close we got. Now that's pretty damn good. Obviously there's some room for improvement because we weren't at exact zero, but I'm happy with that. And it looks like everything in the cabinet's happy too. Everything is amazing right now and nobody's happy. So turn the light off to save some energy and close her on up. I know I should have put the light on a motion sensor or a door switch, but I didn't. So quit being lazy and turn the damn light off. Oh my God, I've become my father. If anyone's wondering why the transmitter wasn't on an intrinsically safe barrier, that's gonna be a topic for another video. But I'm pretty confident that's not the only thing that'll get brought up about this video. Here's a little sneak peek of the drywall and the pumps if anyone was interested. But anyway, let's turn more lights off for the sake of Mother Earth and uh, get out of here. Or go see if my van gets stuck. See ya, bye.